This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid MIDI Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Media Composer 101 tutorial and in the next few lessons we're going to focus on creating DVDs. Now whether these are screening DVDs for festivals or maybe a client's just asked you for a DVD for their own personal archive, if you make a mistake in any step of the process in creating the actual DVD itself, whether it's inside a Media Composer, whether it's in your compression program or whether it's making the DVD itself, it's just going to lead you to no end of headaches. So hopefully these next few lessons are going to clear up any, you know, problems that you might be having with making DVDs coming out of Avid Media Composer. And like I said, we're going to create projects in 4K and then we're going to take them and we're going to export them as standard definition DVDs. And we're going to go through the whole process, like I said, in these next few lessons. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously an alt and tab for all my Windows friends out there. And I have a little timeline that I've thrown together here. I'll just hit play. Now, as always, I want to thank Artbeats for this beautiful looking 4K footage. And basically it's just five shots that I've put in, separated with dissolves, with a music track in. But this is going to be our Academy Award winning documentary. Now, a couple of the things I'm going to throw into the mix here. We're just going to assume for argument's sake that we're going to, for the first part of this lesson, be delivering this file to an external house to have the DVD made. And they've requested that the file that we send them be standard definition 2997 frames per second. Now, of course, if we wanted to, this you know file to be 2398, I actually happen to be working in a 4K 2398 file. It would be very simple. We could just basically switch to NTSC 23976 and do our work there. But like I said, I wanted to sort of show you a bit of a longer process to this because in many cases you'll get, you know, DVD authoring houses that are very specific, very they have very specific instructions on how they want the files delivered. So I thought we would take a look at that in this lesson. Okay, so like I said, nothing very crazy, just a basic timeline. Now, if we were making a screener, let's say this was a screener disc for a producer, let's say they were going to give us feedback on this, we might want to throw in some time code effects here. So let me show you how I would go about doing that before we move on to the actual prepping of the file. So basically what I would do is I'd head into effects mode by simply hitting command and 8 on the Mac, control and 8 on Windows. It's actually to the effects palette that we want to go to. And to find the timecode generator effect is very simple. What we're going to do is we're simply just going to navigate down to the generator category and you can see it right here, timecode burn-in. What we're going to do is we're just going to take one of these effects, I'm going to drag and drop it down onto my shot. Now as soon as I drop it you're going to see that the effect itself is actually tiny. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to step into the effect by stepping into effects mode. And to do that, very simple, I have the shortcut mapped to my keyboard, Shift and Y. If you don't have it mapped, no problem. You can always find it right there. Okay. Now the first thing I need to do is to adjust the appearance of this time code track. And what we're going to do is we're just going to adjust its size. That's looking pretty good. And what we're going to do is we're going to stick this time code in the lower left corner. Now I guess at the end of the day, the big question is, what time code do you want to be represented to your client? Now in this case, we might actually want to put two different time codes on the screen at the same time. We might want to have the time code that's going to represent the actual time code of the clip, and then a time code box, maybe in the upper right hand corner, that's going to represent the time code of the current sequence. So to set the time code of the actual clip itself, you'll see if you take a look up at the top here, the actual uh, time code of the clip is 05370305. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to head on over to the time code drop down and just switch it to be the source time code. There we go. Now what I could basically do now is simply take this effect, drag it and drop it, drag it and drop it, drag it and drop it, and last but certainly not least, drag it and drop it, just like such. So now we basically have in the lower left hand corner the time code that represents each one of these shots. But maybe I need to get in, like I said, I need to add that time code of the sequence to the upper right hand corner. No problem. All we're going to do is basically take that same effect and we're going to drag it down to an empty time code track on the topmost layer, just like such. Again, you'll see it's very tiny, so let's just step in again. 
And what we could even do if we wanted to, just for kicks, is instead of actually doing things the way that I just showed you, what we could actually do is just simply take the time code clip right from here and just drag it and drop it just like such. Now, obviously, we don't want this to represent anything except the actual time code of the sequence. Now, you'll see that right now, if I switch my time code to actually represent the sequence, the time code is, of course, 01000518. And maybe we want to take that, stick it up here in the upper right hand corner, just like such. And of course, what we could do if we wanted to of that time code is maybe we'll just change the background color here to be, oh, I don't know. Um, you know, I could even make it one of the colors of the fish. Probably I'd probably make it maybe like a blue color. You know, maybe something slightly different. You know, let's just make it orange like one of the fish, just like that. Just so you can see that we can now have a very different look between the actual time code representing the clip and the time code representing our sequence. Now, for the purposes of what we're doing, I actually don't want to have that in here, but I just wanted to show that to you in case you were making a screening DVD because it's always something that's very handy to have on the screen. So you don't have the, you know, producer writing down, you know, quick time time codes and things like that or basically my favorite, which is the DVD player, you know, quote unquote, time code. Okay, so now, what we wanna do now is we wanna take this clip, which is, or this sequence, which is of course 4K, and we wanna take it and we want to send it to a standard definition DVD. Now in many cases, now 4K is a little bit different than what our HD workflow would be, so let me just talk in the terms of HD for a second. If this was an HD workflow, what a lot of people like to do is they, they just take their HD timeline and export it as an HD clip and then worry about all the conversion you know, to standard def and you know things like that after the fact. But to be perfectly honest, there's a whole bunch of problems that can be introduced in that process, things like incorrect field dominance, you know, incorrect, you know, cadence in your time code conversions and things like that. So what I tell people is no matter what happens, you know, much like in the movie Titanic, stay on that ship as long as possible. In this case, we want to stay on our ship as long as possible, which in this case is of course Avid Media Composer. We want to stay inside Media Composer for as long as absolutely necessary. Now, in most cases, what I like to do if I'm prepping to make a standard definition DVD is I'm going to take my sequence here and I'm going to duplicate it. And what we're going to do is we're going to call this for our beautiful DVD mix down. So I'll just call it MD. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my video here. Now, if my audio had multiple channels, I would do this with the audio as well. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the special drop down. I'm going to come to video mix down and let's just mix this down. And what I actually have here is I have a graphics bin. Let me just open my graphics bin and I actually already have a, a previous mix down in there. So what I'll do is I'll just delete that mix down here. Just that we're only dealing with one file at a time. There we go. Let's take this sequence here. What we're going to do, video mix down. And I'm going to leave it as DNX HR HQ. We're just going to stick it in graphics. I'll say OK. And it's not going to take very long. You'll see it's cranking through pretty quick. Now again, you know, my sequence is pretty basic and I really don't need to do this, but I'm going to show you why I'm doing this in just a second. There's actually a very good reason. And when you see why I'm doing it, you're going to, you know, that sort of, you know, light bulb is going to go off into your head as to why you haven't been doing this in the past. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this and in our mix down sequence, I'm just going to drop this clip in here. Okay. Now something that's also important to keep in mind, and this is another reason why you might probably have to mix down your timeline, is that if you have anything like, you know, imported Mac keys or anything like that that's in your timeline, you're not gonna be able to do the next step that I'm going to show you because Media Composer will give you an error and tell you that you actually do have to mix it down before you move on. Okay, so now that I have my timeline basically as one video layer and two audio channels, I'm ready to switch over into a standard definition project to keep the process going. So let me just close my bins here and let's switch over now to that standard definition project. Okay, so let's switch projects. Now, of course, like I mentioned before, if we wanted to keep our standard definition DVD to be a 2398 frame per second uh, project, what I could do is just simply in here, just switch over to be NTSC 23976 and then the process that I'm gonna show you would work very similar. But I want to sort of throw, like I said, that little wrench into things where we're delivering this to a DVD house and they have very specific recommendations or very specific file specs that they want to use when having the file delivered to them. Okay, so let me just switch. I have a project called, appropriately enough, DVD project. And as you can see, it's a standard definition 30i project. What I'm going to do is simply say, okay. 
Okay, and once the project is open, all I'm going to do is I'm going to open my empty bin, and maybe we'll just call this Final DVD. Okay, and you're going to see that I have a folder called Other Bins because I've already opened this bin here that has my two sequences in it. And let's just talk about the layered sequence first. Basically, I called it layered, meaning there might be multiple layers of video. It's one that I haven't mixed down. So all I'm going to do is I'm simply going to take that sequence. I'm going to option drag it or alt drag it if you happen to be on Windows. And what's going to happen now when I double click on that, you're going to see that Media Composer is going to say, well, hold on a second. The sequence frame rate doesn't match that of the project frame rate. Do you want to load a copy of the sequence that has been modified to match the project's play rate? Now, in this case, we're going from a 2398 project to a 2997 project. So I can have Media Composer do all the cadence conversions for me. So I'm simply going to say yes, do that. And you're going to see that I basically now have a standard definition representation of that project. But you're going to see that something's going on and everything's a little bit messed up only because when I transcoded those clips, they were transcoded in their native resolution and they weren't the same frame size when I was working with them. Some clips were scope, some clips were flat. Now, of course, I could get in with FrameFlex and I could you know, adjust these clips, but that's why I brought the mix down over as well. And again, like I said, if you happen to have, you know, let's say, mat keys in your timeline, you wouldn't be able to do the process I just showed you. The other thing that's also important to keep in mind is that if you had titles in your timeline, they would immediately all go offline. You then have to get in and recreate those titles in a standard definition project. So you can see why mixing things down might be the best way to go. Okay, so let's just take both these sequences and let's delete them. and Let's only deal with the sequence that has been mixed down. Because like I said, this is probably gonna be your most common workflow. So again, option drag for the Mac, alt drag for Windows, all I'm going to do now is double click. I'm going to say yes, convert that frame rate. And here is everything basically set to go. Now you're going to see that things are full frame. So what exactly is going on here? Well, the first thing that's important to keep in mind is that if I come up to the format tab, you're going to see that the aspect ratio right now is set to four by three. And I can easily change that to be 16 by nine to get a 16 by nine representation of what is going on in my timeline. Okay, but there's something else that's going on here as well. What I actually have the ability to do, because I know that this, the clip in this timeline is actually way larger than the frame size, of course, Media Composer has gone in and attached FrameFlex to that timeline. Now, what's important to keep in mind that right now you'll see that I'm actually getting the proper aspect ratio because the image is flat. It's not actually 16 by 9, which would be 175 to 1, which is the aspect of our frame size. It's actually 185 to 1. Now this frame aspect ratio is representing our frame. So how do I know exactly what is going on with my clip? Well, let me show you. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to close the effects editor and I'm going to come back. I can actually just close my 4K bin here. Let's just deal with our final DVD. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call this original sequence. What we'll do is call this original 4K sequence. Okay, Just that we have it in there for reference. And I think what I'm going to do is just tag it as being red, just so that we know that we don't need it. But I do need it for one thing. What I'm going to do is I want to have Media Composer show me this clip in my bin. But the problem is I don't have the clip in this bin. I don't want to go searching for it you know, in the old project. But Media Composer actually does have it in this bin. It's just not showing it to me. So how do I get it to show it to me? Well, it's very simple. What I'm going to do is right click. I'm going to come down to set bin display and I'm going to say, show me the reference clips. Now it's going to say select reference clips to see all the source material related to sequences you add to the bin. So as soon as I say OK, it's going to show me the clips that are associated with this original 4K sequence. And you'll see one of the clips, of course, is that video mix down. There it is. So what I can do is simply right click on it, come down to source settings, and you'll see inside of frame flex that the frames aspect ratio is set to 185, which is the correct aspect ratio for the 4K flat project. So I know that if I come back here, let me actually just turn that set bin display off here. Okay. There we go. And you'll see now that if I come back, if I just come back here and just drag through, you'll see that in a 16 by 9 project, I'm all set to go because with FrameFlex, you'll see 
that it's set to stretch to fill the frame. Now, of course, Media Composer is just showing this to me as a 16 by 9 project, stretch to fill the window, which is what we would want. And it's, of course, the correct aspect ratio because FrameFlex is setting it to be the correct aspect ratio. But what if I came to the format because the client doesn't want it as 16 by 9? They only want it as 4 by 3. Well, that doesn't look right, does it? Well, of course not. But of course, again, going back to the power of frame flex, all I have to do is simply step into effects mode. And instead of getting in and messing around with the position and the size, all I need to do is simply come down to the reformat option. And in this case, maybe I wanted it to be full frame. So I'm going to switch it to be center cropped. You'll see it represented now over here on the left screen. You'll see what it was before. There it is, stretch. What I could do is center crop it. Now, I should also point out that we're not looking at this at the best quality. So there we go. That's looking much better. And of course, if I wanted to, I could also get in and letterbox or pillar box it just like such. So depending on whatever the client might want for the screening copy, we can easily use the power of frame flex to get in and alter this timeline however we want. Now, of course, one thing that's also important to keep in mind is if we wanted to export this now, what I could do is simply select the entire timeline. Now, of course, if I wanted to do you know, a quote unquote proper export, what I would do is I would mix this down again in a standard definition project. I would then do a same as source export to do it as a fast export. But for the purposes of what we're doing, what I think I'm going to do, for the purposes of what we're doing is we're going to create a widescreen DVD. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the reformat option back to be stretched to fill the frame just like that because we're going to get in and we're going to take care of the actual 16 by 9 outside of Media Composer. Okay, so let's take this. Let's simply right click. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say export. I am actually going to tell it that it's going to be a same as source export. And what we're going to do is we're just going to call this SD DVD. I'm simply going to say save. Media Composer is going to say, well, hold on a second. You know, no clips in the sequence were found to be same as source. So do you want me to export this as 30i DV25411 rather than same as source? And I'm going to say, sure. Now, like I said before, in most cases, what we would do is we would probably mix the sequence down. We wouldn't transcode the clips. We'd mix the sequence down to be a proper standard definition resolution, which would probably be 2 to 1. Then we could do a proper same as source export. But for the purposes of what we're doing right now, this is going to suit our needs. Okay, let me just hide Media Composer and here is the file on our desktop that we're going to right click. We're going to open it with QuickTime Player. And of course, as you can see, there's our footage looking stretched in a 4x3 frame, but that's okay because in the next lesson I'm going to show you how we're easily going to be able to correct this inside of our compression application of choice. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.